Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the names and titles of Jesus with Mike Fisher. As we're jumping in to the names and titles of Jesus, today we've been given the term Lord. Easton's Bible Dictionary gives us this definition. It's a proper name for God. It refers to domination or a supreme master. Today we're going to read in John chapter 21 verses 2 to 8. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. Two things stick out to me as I read this passage. The first thing is this. These group of friends are out fishing, and they don't catch anything the whole night. But as soon as this man from shore tells them to throw in their net, whether they trusted that was going to work or not, they did. As soon as the net hit the water, it was filled with fish. And not just one fish or two fish, but an overwhelming number of fish. Upon this experience, John, the disciple Jesus loved, recognizes the man on the shore to be none other than the Lord himself, Jesus Christ. We don't know why it took him a while to recognize this, but at this moment, he recognizes Jesus to be who Jesus is, Lord, Master, the dominant, supreme master of the universe. The second big thing I notice is that Peter has no time to row the boat back to shore with the disciples. Once he hears that it's Jesus, the Lord, on the shore, he has to get there immediately. He can't resist. So he jumps into the water and swims to shore. He throws away the inconveniences of swimming because the joy of being with the Lord himself face to face was worth it to him. If you're like me, you probably have a hobby and you probably have a hobby because they're fun. They're refreshing. They're rejuvenating. They give you some life. For me, I'm a basketball guy. I love to watch it. I love to play it. I love to attend games. And anytime there's a basketball nearby, I can't resist, but picking it up and dribbling it. And if there's a hoop nearby, you know I have to take a couple shots. I cannot resist it because I love it. There's something about it. There's some nostalgia, some good feeling, some good vibes. It all comes along with this game of basketball. As much as I have that experience and that feeling toward basketball, I think it's really clear that the disciple Jesus loved, John, and Peter also have that experience. If you've spent time reading through the gospel accounts, you could probably put together some pieces that they love Jesus. They recognize him to be Lord because of what he had accomplished. They'd seen him heal people. They'd seen him do all sorts of miracles. And the greatest miracle was that he was betrayed and murdered, but that he resurrected from the grave. He didn't stay dead, but he was alive. Because of this, they believe him to be the God of the universe, the Lord of life. And so when they have this opportunity to draw near to him, they take it. They cannot avoid it. They can't resist him. I think that is really significant because it's really easy in today's day and age to just not really believe God, not believe that he's real or, you know, maybe have doubts. Maybe you might be sitting saying, Why doesn't God do that to me? Why doesn't he prove himself with a miracle to me? Here's what I think 
is really valuable about having the scriptures. And here's what it says right before the story in John chapter 20. It says, because you've seen me, this is Jesus speaking, you've believed, referring to Thomas. But he continues, he says, but blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. At the very end of chapter 20, it says, these things are written so that we might believe that Jesus is God and that by believing in him, we may have life in his name. And so my takeaway is that we've been given the Holy Scriptures for a purpose, and that purpose is to believe that Jesus is Lord, the dominant supreme master of the universe, and that by believing that, we can have life. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.